Hello and welcome to Phuket Pulse GED Express Screencast with me, Teacher Marky. Today's lesson focuses on cell theory. Now, before we proceed with our topic, let's have a quick recall from our previous discussion. We talked about the levels of organization. Now, at the end of the discussion, every one of you is expected to define, cite, determine, and conclude ideas about the cell theory. You can also be able to know the different people that were able to contribute on this specific theory. Now we begin with this first person. At 1665, Robert Hooke was able to observe cells in a cork and he was able to coin that as cells because it resembles the cells of the prisoner during their time. Now, at year 1673, Anton van Leeuwenhoek was able to create a powerful microscope which paves way to the discovery of other microscopic organisms, including the building blocks of life, which is a cell. Now, on 1827 to 1833, Robert Brown was able to notice that pollen grains and water jiggled around and he coined that as Brownian motion. And because of this specific phenomena, he was able to discover the nucleus of a cell. And you see there on the photo an example of a human chick cell where the nucleus is very evident. Now next, at 1838, Matthias Clyden which is a botanist, was able to conclude that all plants are made up of cells. Now, after Matthias Clyden, we have Theodor Schwann at 1839. He is a zoologist, and he was able to conclude that all animals are made up of cells. Now, on the year 1855, Rudolf Virchow was able to coin or conclude his discovery that all cells comes from pre-existing cells. He also he's also known as a physician and who was able to make research on cancer cells. Now after that we will proceed with the cell theory and including its parts. So we have the first statement here, all living things are made up of one or more cells. So we can categorize living things as unicellular, that means they only have one cell, such as those with amoeba, the photo on the center. And we can also categorize them as multicellular, that means there, is, there are union of cells working together like those of the cell of plants, including human beings, such as the human red blood cell. Now, next statement under the cell theory is that cell is the basic unit of life. I also discussed this on the previous discussion or during my first screencast. And under the cell theory, it is believed that cell is the smallest part in which a living thing can live on its own now for the last statement we have here this one which is being supported by Rodolfo virtual concluding statement that cells only comes from other cells that means they cells only comes from pre-existing cells so with regards to that no new cells can be formed from a different organism that means it should be coming from a parent cell. Now, we have here another statement or the additional statement under the cell theory. Energy flows happens in all cells. That means they get food or energy from somewhere in their environment. It can be categorized as those species that are relying directly from the sunlight or they are known as autotrophic organism 
or they can be heterotrophic organisms those organisms which relies on other living organisms in order for them to obtain energy now we have here another statement under the cell theory heredity information or deoxyribonucleic acid is contained in all cells and passed from cell to cell and that is being passed from one generation to the next that means there would be a passing of traits from one upstream to another upstream it's because of the genetic material known as the dna now we have here the final concluding statement under the cell theory we have here all cells are made of the same basic chemicals so no matter what the size of that cell is or no matter what the origin of that cell is the primary composition of that will always be these elements these basic chemicals so we have here carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen now i have here an extra discussion i have a fun fact for you now do you know why viruses are not alive so here's the answer to that question viruses are not alive because they doesn't have any dna but cannot replicate on its own and does not have any organelles on it and they are not primarily made up of cells that's why they are not considered as a living thing and on that photo you can see a photo of a flu virus that is illustrated on that kind of manner now since you already have an understanding on our topic about the cell theory and you were able to understand the different people under this specific theory in biology let's have this assessment so first what did Lewin Hick do is it a look at court b stated that animals are made of cells c all plants are made of cells or d use simple light microscope and so microorganism what is your answer yes you're right the answer is letter d luminuk was able to use simple light microscope microscope and so microorganism how about this next question Tudor Schwann did which of the following is it a he said that plants are not made of cells letter b said that animals aren't made of cells letter c stated that all plants have cells or d stated that all animals have cells so for Tudor Schwann the right answer is letter d stated that all animals have cells how about this question Marius Clyden was a the first to see a cell and name it a cell such as that of a room and look at court saw a line of cell that reminded him of, roo of rooms b said that all plants are multicellular or c said the beginning unit is always a cell or d was the second person to see a man on earth so the right answer is letter b said that all plants are multicellular now next we have here Rudolf Virchow what is his contribution with the cell theory is it a the first to conclude that cell com comes from pre-existing cells b said that all plants are multicellular c said that, be that the beginning unit is always a cell or d was the second person to see a man on earth the answer is letter a you're right the first to conclude the cell comes from pre-existing cell that is termed by Rudolf Virchow now we have here another question what does the cell theory state a that all living things are made of cells b every cell has only one nucleus c the plants cannot have cells or d animals are only one that have cells the right answer is letter a that's an easy question and next we have here this one true or false a cell is the basic unit of life this is also an easy question the right answer is true 
Cell is considered as the basic unit of life. Now next, the beginning unit is always a cell. It starts from cells to tissues to organs to organ system and to organism. Is it true or false? Exactly, that's right. It's true because that is under the statement of the cell theory. And next question, all cells don't come from pre-existing cells. Do you agree with that or not? Is it true or false? Definitely, the statement is false because according to Rudolf Virchow, all cells come from pre-existing cells. That makes the statement incorrect. And we have no other questions. So, great job, everyone. And congratulations that you did, did well on the assessment. Now, for the lesson summary, you need to consider the following. The people who developed the cell theory are these people. First, we have Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who was able to see an organism using a microscope. We have Tudor Schwann, Matthias Clyden, and Rudolf Virchow. Now, we have here this specific statement that cells are diverse and they can be diverse in terms of size, shape, and internal organization, but they share the same property. Now, for the cell theory, you need to consider that all living things are composed of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of structures and function in an organism. And cells come only, co only from existing cells or pre-existing cells. Now, that will be all for our discussion for today under cell theory now for our references we always have here this one reading essentials for biology glencoe 2017 and glencoe biology macro hill education you can use these references if you want to have an advanced reading on our future topic and that will be all thank you so much for watching and since you are already here you might as well like and subscribe to our youtube channel and you can connect with us at www.phuketpulse.org or visit us at our Facebook page at facebook.com slash phuketpulse or you can also call or contact us directly if you have questions regarding our organizations at 081-417-0978 I hope you find this video useful and see you on my next screencast. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Goodbye, everyone.